Hello friends, welcome to this session. Today we'll see how you can access Azure Table Storage using shared access keys in Postman. As you can see here on Microsoft site, different Azure storages, whether it is blob, files, or tables, they are supported for different types of authorization, shared key, or SAS, which is nothing but shared access signature. There is another video which I have made. You can see that video to find out how you can access table storage using SAS then Azure Active Directory and some other methods. But in this session, we'll focus on connecting to Azure tables using access keys. If you scroll down further, here it explains about shared key and we'll go to authorize with shared key. Now, if you see here, it talks about two ways to access table services. One is shared key for table service, which is normal shared key authorization. Another is shared key light which is another way of authorization scheme to make requests against the blob, queue, table, and file services. So in today's session, we'll see both shared key light, what's that way of authorization, and shared key as well. So let's log into portal now. And here I have already created a storage account. And within storage account, on the left side here under tables, you can see there are no tables yet. So we'll log into Postman and using Postman, We'll try to create table in this storage account, and then we'll try to insert some records into those tables, and then we'll try to access those records in Postman. And this all we'll do using shared access key. So if you see here in storage account, we scroll down further, there is access keys option, and you will normally get two keys. So one will be primary set of keys, another will be secondary. And these are the keys which will allow to authenticate your application request to this storage account. So now let's see in Postman how we do that. So here is a Postman and here you can see I have create table request, insert record request and get or query that table request. And this I'm going to use shared access light authorization scheme. So all these three requests will be done based on shared access light. Now how this is done, I have attached an environment named Azure Table Storage Shared Access Key. And there I have defined a variable Azure Storage Account, which holds the storage account name and then the access key, Azure Storage Key. So I've copied the key here and header authorization and header date will be populated when we send the request. So these are the two main variables which I have defined in the environment here. Now let's see the first request, which is a post request to create a table. So you need this endpoint for the tables and this endpoint, you can get it from the portal. If you go back to portal, scroll down endpoints and you will see endpoints for blob, file, queue and table. So this is the endpoint. Uh, I have just taken off the table storage account name and replaced with environment variable here and appended with tables. So this is required and endpoint for creating tables. Now in headers, I've created these four headers, date, authorization, the version, and the content type. In the body, we'll pass the name of the table in JSON format. And in prerequisite script, we will create a authorization token using shared access key. So it takes your storage account and the access keys. This is the date and this is the string to be formulated, which will be converted using the HMAC shard hoof disease algorithm. And it is something like this. So you have to pass date and canonical resource. So this is the date and this is a storage account and this will give anything passed like slash tables. So here I'm setting header authorization and header date. So let's run this to create this table. See here, response is 201 created which is positive response and table name test table light is created. So I just added light because I'm using shared access light method right now. If you go back to portal under tables, refresh and you can see table is created. Going back to Postman, now we'll use another post message and this will be to create a record in that table. So the endpoint for creating record is something like this, which appends with the table name here. These are the headers which you have to pass the date, the authorization, the version and the content type. In the body, you'll pass in the JSON format, the record. Now here, unique attributes are this partition key and the row key. These two together will create a unique record. So make sure they always form a unique record for the entries in the table. Pre-request script is almost same. No changes here because it is using shared key light authorization scheme with the storage account and the signature. So we'll run this and the response is 201 created. And if you scroll down, it shows here the record is created and you can 
see here the table and the partition key and the row key which it has created so now using another message we'll query that data here this is the endpoint for getting record from the table table name appended at the end in headers we'll pass date and then accept accepted format the authorization version data service version and max data service version these values in prerequest script it will be again same because we are still using shared key light authorization scheme so nothing changes here so let's run this and the response is 200 okay and you can see it has queried the data which we have inserted in table now we'll see how to use just the shared access and still create table or insert record into it so the endpoint remains same nothing changes here even the headers remain same and body also same you have to pass the name of the table which you want to create but in the prerequest script this particular encoding changes so let me show you here the documentation for table service shared access key authorization you can see here it says to encode the signature string for a request against a table service made using the rest api this is the format which we have to use so you have to use the verb content md5 content type date and canonicalized resource now this is what here it is the verb is post and then md5 we don't need to pass anything and then application json is the content type the date and this is a canonical resource and here instead of shared key light we will just say shared key with the signature so this is the only change in the authorization scheme whether you are using shared key or shared key light with the shared key you have to keep mentioning about the verb only that particular action can be performed so let's run this to create the table you can see 201 response and table is created let's go back to portal and check if we refresh so test table is created let's go back to postman and now we'll try to create a record in this table so the endpoint is again same you just append with the new table name headers remain same authorization version content type body is same you have to just pass a json format table name so here partition key and row key are just changed a little bit and the pre-request script is again using verb post and shared key plus signature so let's run this 201 status code so this record is created you can see here so now we'll run get request to access this record in the same table headers accept date authorization version data service version and max data service version and pre-request script remains same only the verb changes here plus we don't need to send the content type so i've removed that and rest rest remains same and it's using shared key so we'll run this 200k and we can see it has queried the data so you can see using shared access key also you can access table storage i hope this will help you to use access key to get access to table storage see you next session thank you